Hi book friends! Today we are going to be reviewing this critically acclaimed book, Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas. I just want to take a second to appreciate the cover of this novel. I love that a book, one especially as popular as this one, has a black male teenager on the cover with his do-rag and chain looking all tough. I love it. You know, um, representation matters and this definitely represents. Appreciate it. Love it. Hi book friends, welcome back to my bookshelf where I be reviewing books once a week. The recent books that I've been reading, I like to get into the nitty gritty of a novel. I love to discuss novels. So you, if you also love books, if you also love discussing novels, then don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. All right, so today we're going to be reviewing Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas. I must say right off the bat, this book has made it into my top five favorite recent reads. It's just such an amazing novel. It's one that represents, it educates, and it inspires. So I just want to shout out Angie Thomas <laughs> for, you know, how brilliantly and well-crafted this novel is, how brilliantly she created this character and explored his story, and all of the different messages that she got across in this novel. Honestly, she's a real one. So, if you guys remember the novel The Hate You Give, or if you've watched the movie The Hate You Give, then you will recognize the character in the novel Concrete Rose. If you guys remember Star uh, is the protagonist of this novel, and her, old, and her father is Maverick Carter. And you learn briefly about his past in this novel, but in this novel, we are taken back 17 years in the past to a 17-year-old Maverick Carter. So he is the father of Star, but we are taken to the past to just find out more about his life and, you know, especially during the time of when he's about to be a father. So basically the story is about Maverick Carter, like I mentioned. He's 17 years old, living in Garden Heights, and he finds out after a one-night stand with a girl named Aisha that he is now a father. She has a baby, they do a DNA test, they find out that he is the father of this baby boy. Um, and he quickly takes on the role of being a father. And he also has a girlfriend named Lisa who he's in love with. And obviously that creates complications because while him and Lisa were on a break, that was when he uh, had that one night stand. And so obviously now that they're back together, that creates a lot of complications. There's no denying it, Maverick Carter makes some foolish and stupid decisions that have, you know, hard nut consequences throughout this novel. I mean, now he is 17 years old and has a son and his whole life changes after the birth of his child. So basically, his father is the, was the leader of the King Lords, which is a gang in Garden Heights. And even though his father is now in prison, um, he still feels this pressure to kind of live up to his father's legacy. So he's selling drugs and he's just trying to be all swaggy and stacked with money, you know, and just live in this young hustler life. But when he has seven, which is the what he names his baby boy, um, everything changes and he wants to go straight and he wants to do right by his family. But he also wants to provide and of course that means he needs money. And so throughout the novel, he continues to struggle with what kind of man he wants to be. And there's just a lot of pressure that he's under, you know, this pressure to be his father's son, um, this pressure to be a good father to his own son, this pressure from his mother to, you know, continue on the straightened path, pressure from his girlfriend, Lisa, to not be a gangbanger anymore. And then, you know, pressure to be able to provide for his family because his mother works two jobs and she can't afford to help him take care of the baby and pay all the bills. So there's that pressure. And then also pressure to, you know, make sure he continues to get good grades. And then also pressure from like the ideology of street cred. You know, you're, you're lame if you're not hustling. And his friends are always like egging him on to continue to be a part of the gang life, you know? So there's just a lot of pressure that he's under and he's just a young 17 year old guy that's dealing with a lot of adult issues. 
Like I mentioned earlier, representation matters, and there is a lot of different ways that this novel represents a community that is often ignored or misrepresented in, you know, the media or in Hollywood. And one of the ways that this novel represents is just through its writing style. I think that it was written so well that I was fully immersed in Maverick's head. I was fully walking in his shoes. The way that she chose to change up the dialect and play with language and make it more authentic to Maverick's uh, voice was something that I just deeply appreciated. I think it's really important for people as writers to play with language, to play with dialect, to play with slang, and to put it into this piece of literature that is being widely populated because we don't all express ourselves the same, we don't all speak the same, and that needs to be put out into the world, as I said, representation, right? Maverick's character itself and also the community of Garden Heights also represents in multiple ways. I think it is critical for stories um, from these kinds of neighborhoods, you know, community housing, the ghetto, the projects, um, to be narrated in literature. It's, it's crucial, it's critical, it's important, and I literally mean like life and death important. These communities and the people that are living in these communities um, have historically been and continue to be misrepresented and stigmatized throughout Hollywood and throughout the media and our voices are often spoken for or spoken over and that is why our neighborhoods continue to be stigmatized as, you know, dangerous and people living in these com communities are continuously stereotyped as criminals, you know, because we're not speaking for ourselves. So it is imperative that we take the reins and we tell our own stories. And through these stories, we bring humanity to these communities. I have grown up in these kinds of communities, these impoverished marginalized communities my whole life so I completely related to this community and I related to characters in this novel a lot and I myself as a writer have wrote multiple short stories and poems that explore the lives of people living in these communities because I want to bring humanity to the communities and you know I want to you know explore the good the bad and the ugly just like humanity itself you know and that's exactly what this novel does. A novel such as this educates um, it challenges the idea that black people are inherently dangerous or that black people are inherently um, violent or that black people are inherently stupid, you know, that they don't care about school. Um, it challenges these stereotypes by showing us why someone might want to join a gang or why someone might drop out of school or why someone might resort to violence. And these are all systemic issues. One of those systemic issues is poverty. Maverick is poor. His mother works two jobs and she can't afford to pay for all the bills and help him take care of his baby. His father is in jail and so it's just him and he needs money to survive. He needs money to take care of his son and to help his mother and he needs quick, fast money. And when his friends are constantly on his back like, you need to sell drugs or you, you need to make this money and he's seeing how his friends are loaded and he's struggling to survive. It's almost, it almost feels impossible to say no to that kind of life because he needs to support his mom and he needs to support his son. The school system is another systemic issue that needs to be explored. School is not designed to cater to people who are poor and who are living in these marginalized community. These are people who are dealing with issues that not a lot of people have to deal with. You know, very adult issues and very traumatic experiences. So let's say a kid has just witnessed someone being murdered or shot and killed and murdered in their community and then they have to go to school and give a crap about class and give a crap about doing their schoolwork. I mean, come on. <laughs> so school is not designed to think about those kinds of experiences and that is where the school system fails these kinds of students because a lot of the time the teachers just see them as hopeless and that they just don't care. So what's the point of putting in the effort when really these are people who are dealing with things, very adult issues, and it's a lot for any child or teenager to have to deal with while also having to worry about school. And you know, racism is another systemic issue that plays itself out in the novel. Um, 
it obviously affects the kind of jobs that Maverick can get and it affects the way that he was treated out in in the world in society and so here is this young man who feels like he is a stereotype and he's just trying to survive and the story is so important because as readers we then get to walk in Maverick's shoes and we get to empathize with his experiences and empathy is so important because empathy challenges stereotypes and empathy ultimately challenges racism so in my opinion, like I said, this novel is very, very important. Representation matters and this novel represents and it educates and it of course inspires. All right, on to my rating. Can you guess? <laughs> Of course, I gave this novel a 5 out of 5. I loved this novel. I loved being in Maverick's head. I loved being in Maverick's world. I loved being in Maverick's community. And as much as there were hard themes being explored, such as poverty and gang violence and murder and racism, I still just really enjoyed this story from beginning to end. The characterization of Maverick was so authentic and real that he just actually felt like a real person and he just holds a special place in my heart. <laughs> I don't care how mushy that sounds, he just does. All the characters are really well formed and the community itself just comes alive on the page. It is full of raw emotion and humor. I definitely teared up reading this. I definitely got upset, angry, happy. I laughed a lot as well. And so there's just a lot of emotions that come out while you read this novel. I also loved that the protagonist was male and that we got to follow this black male teenager as he becomes a father. Yet again, another way that this novel represents because he is a single black teenage male father and he's really trying and that's just not a story that gets told often enough. He's not abandoning his child, you know, he's trying to do the right thing. And it was really interesting just to see him <laughs> be a father to a three-month-old child. <laughs> um, so it's, like I said, it's just not a story that is told enough. And like I said, representation matters. So yet again, kudos to Angie Thomas. Yet again, she slayed. All right, that is all for my review today. If you have any comments or opinions or discussion points that you would love to get into, don't forget to comment below. I would love to chat about this novel with all of y'all. And you know, if you liked this video, if you enjoyed my take on this novel, don't forget to like and subscribe. It would mean a lot to me. Until next time, bye.